Hi everybody, it's Mr. Matthew here, and this video is going to be about population ecology. And specifically, we're going to look at some of the dynamics that influence how populations grow and some of the factors that will put strain on the growth of that population and some of the patterns that we'll see in population growth as a result of the matter and energy that organisms are going to be trying to utilize in their survival, struggle for survival. All right, so let's get to it. So first of all, I want to describe some factors that influence growth dynamics of population. So uh, one key thing that we can think about in terms of survivability could be something like a predator-prey dynamic that we see here. And so in predator-prey dynamics, it brings up a lot of different factors. One thing is that as organisms struggle for survival, they are going to have some energy demands on those organisms, and they may also be the energy source for another organism. So if I'm a hare that's shown in red, uh, there is going to be a struggle for survival, the ability to get food, the ability to get mates and pass on genes, uh, having space, having water, all of the various resources that are there. Additionally, predators are going to provide a selective pressure on that population. And as the population goes up, it is going to be able to sustain a large population of predators that can feed on that population. And so what we'll see in this predator-prey dynamics is that as the hare population increases, we see that there is a shortly afterwards, a rise in link population. And as the lynx population increases, there tends to be a crash in the hare population. Hare population goes down, lynx population then declines. That leads to a rise in hare population. That leads to a rise of link population. And so we can see that both the factors of competition within in a population of hares is going to play a role on how large that population can get as it struggles for existence to get the resources. But also other populations are going to play a role on how large an individual population can play. Now predator prey is one of those instances, but competition for resources is another, whether it is within the same species or between different species that are struggling to gain those resources. So one of the things that we see is that populations comprise of individuals of organisms that interact with one another and with the environment in complex ways. So this is a classic experiment where two different forms of paramecium are grown on their own over time to see how those populations do. And as we see them, that if you give some time, they, they have an initial growth, they get a little exponential, and they start to level off and flatten out. However, if I put both species in the same container, what we end up seeing is that the P. aurelia does just great. It has the ability to compete and get resources better than the P. caudatum. And so paramecium caudatum is not very good at competing with the other paramecium species. This shows that not only do species compete with other members of species for resources, which is why it's not a completely exponential growth, it levels off relatively, but if there is another species, those populations will compete with one another for resources and will have an impact on the ultimate size that a population can grow when competing for resources. In this instance, it's probably for food and space within the ecosystem because in this ecosystem, it's probably in a container of growth medium that is on a lab bench where these are being measured. But regardless of how they're being uh, placed, whether it is in the wild or in a lab setting, uh, the dynamics hold true that species are going to compete for resources, both amongst the members of that species, but with also other species for those same resources. So many adaptations of organisms are related to obtaining and using energy in particular environments. And so it's important to know that when we think about how populations grow, there are really sort of four factors that we think about that are going to influence overall what the population growth is going to look like. And those four factors are the birth rate, the death rate, the rate of immigration, and the rate of emigration. In this particular graph that we see here on the, uh, on the side, we're really looking at just the growth of population in an S-shaped curve or a logistic-shaped curve. And what we'll see here is that initially there's going to be a slow growth rate, and then there's going to be in a fast growth rate, which would look fairly exponential if we look at uh, the maximum rate that they can grow. And during this time, what we're seeing is that initially there's a rise in birth rate. And then during the fast growth rate, 
the birth rate is much, much higher than death rate. And then eventually the slowing of the growth is going to be where the death rate is starting to come up. And when we get to st stable equilibrium, we're going to estimate that the birth rate and the death rate are going to be roughly equal to each other at the end when the population reaches its carrying capacity or levels off within that environment. And it's important to know that carrying capacity is the amount of organisms within a region or the envir environment that it can support sustainably. And that is usually the point at which getting to resources, birth rate and death rate are going to balance out with one another. Now, we can also look at the idea that reproduction without any restraints is going to lead to exponential growth. And so if I look here, what I see is that this is a very J-shaped curve where there is a maximum um, growth rate for that population over time, and that population is going to grow and grow and grow. This is an imaginary scenario where there's unlimited food, unlimited space, no diseases, no predators, and that population can bound up. In reality, all populations are going to eventually be constrained. And while many populations, especially when they are establishing into a new niche and they're taking off, will go through an initial exponential growth phase, eventually some resource within that population is going to become limiting and that's going to determine the carrying capacity for that population in that given environment. And those factors that lead to carrying capacity are really going to be about accessing energy for those organisms or act accessing some sort of key material or matter. And that could include just the physical space to grow. All right, so that was a pretty quick review, and I hope it was helpful, and I'll talk to everybody soon.